What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we set up a crazy mob farm down here. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been working on this just a little bit off camera. Uh, I added in a few more things for our big old mob farm. Yeah, so over here, we have the on-off switch, which uh, turns the fans and the mob grinder on and off. But we also have a redstone torch on top of here. So when we turn this thing off... It emits a redstone signal, which sends the redstone signal through the green channel, not the red channel, the green channel, uh, to the bottom side here, which lights up all these redstone lamps. So yeah, we can turn the farm off, make it safe, so nothing is, uh, so like the fans aren't going to be blowing us into the mob grinder, and then it lights it all up. So the only thing we really have to worry about under here now is just slimes and those scary, scary bats. <laughs> so yeah, the whole thing gets lit up now, which is awesome. So yeah, very, very cool. Uh, and then I can turn this thing back on and the bats and the slimes all go to the center and get ground up. So I also added in the absorption hopper here. So we are collecting all the XP that does pull it through the blocks that gets put in through this uh, conduit into an experience obelisk. So we made one of those. I stored all the levels that we've been uh, collecting on ourselves into here and then yeah it's gained up to 191 levels so far it's crazy uh we were also collecting a little bit of liquid xp before i think from our mob farm that we had up here before which i have removed since we are no longer going to be needing that uh, i dumped all the liquid xp that we had in there uh down into that same thing so that's pretty much all of our xp totaled up together uh so in here we can kind of see how fast that mob farm is collecting stuff uh, I've updated all the filters in uh, our mob, I guess, yeah, our mob loot collection system. So, like, all of the different armor and stuff that we're getting gets deleted. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, all of that goes into here. I did upgrade this thing that extracts out of our diamond chest buffer into our uh, storage drawers over here. I upgraded this thing to have the full 15 speed upgrades for the item conduit. So yeah, everything that comes in here gets removed quite quickly. Now we have gotten 23 feathers, so we are kind of having a chicken farm almost. Uh, that's from chicken jockeys that are spawning down below, I do believe. So yeah, all the stuff that we're getting is being put into its own drawer. Each of these drawers has a void upgrade. If we get too much of the stuff, it gets deleted out. The only thing we haven't put a void upgrade on is this one right here, this compacting drawer. Uh, this is on the back. It's extracting, I think, the rare loot bags or whatever the purple ones are over into this one. It gets compacted into the big boys, and this one has a void upgrade on there. Yep, anyway, so we got a lot of stuff happening here. All the loot is being taken care of. It doesn't look very pretty, <laughs> but everything is being sorted appropriately the way it needs to be. So that is very, very good. <sighs> okay, so today, what I want to do is I would like to hook up our applied energistic system so it starts reading all the different inventories of stuff that we have around, like all of the mob loot that we have over here. Yeah, this is all separate. Like if we want string, we have to come over here and look at the string and collect the string and get it out of there. I want our applied energistics to be able to read that so we can just see all of our different inventories over here and be like, all right, I need some string now. Well, we have more than 24. <laughs> But yeah, according to the system, we only have 24 because it can't see those storage drawers over there. So let's get that fixed. So in order to do that, we are going to need to get our storage bus. One of these guys. Yeah, so that's two pistons, one sticky, and then a ME interface makes one of those. We need to put one of those guys on our storage drawer controller right here. Yep, so that way it'll be able to read. I almost wonder if I should bring that closer or do something different. Hmm. We're going to end up running the cables in here and then straight down. I just don't know if that's the best spot for it. I don't know. Maybe it'd be better just to run the cable all the way over here and have it attached to something that's on the storage drawers instead of dropping down in the middle of the room. I kind of felt like this was going to be a good idea, but the more I think about it, the more I just think it's kind of silly that we did it that way. I don't know. That'll be one of those things we'll have to figure out. But first things first, we have to make the interface. We have to make the pistons. We have to do all that. Maybe auto crafting is a thing we should look at as well. Uh, so if we want to make an interface, we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have any auto craft stuff. Interface uh, requires us to have the formation core and the annihilation core, some iron and some glass. So it's all really inexpensive stuff. But we do have to have these things. 
Unfortunately, we don't have any more of the logic processors, so we're going to have to make uh, a bunch of those in preparation so we don't have to keep making these every two seconds. Uh, how much gold do we have? 103. We could probably make 16 processors, grab some of that silly silicon as well, grab some of that stuff, and then we're going to need some redstone to put it all together again. Cool. I think we... No, it's this one right here. We put those up here. And we'll just let those process. So I'll go ahead and make out those processors, start getting the parts ready so we can make our storage bus and start the process of getting everything connected. All right, guys. So I was kind of looking at our storage situation here, what I wanted to do. So I did clean some things up. We got rid of the storage controller that's been sitting like right here for a long time. Got rid of all of the trim that we had underneath and I moved everything around to the back. So this is a lot neater system and probably something we should have done a little bit e uh, sooner. So yeah, we have our mob loot coming into our ender chest here, and then we're extracting out of that with our 15 speed upgrade item conduit. Uh, we have that going into three different places. So over here, we set this to priority 10 on the trash can that has the filter, trying to throw away all of the garbage armor and swords and things like that, that we don't want. All of that stuff gets immediately deleted. Uh, we have another one going here that's on a priority five into our controller sleeve which is trying to go into all of our storage drawers so if we have a spot for them they all go into the drawers if we have no spot for them they get put over into this chest here so yeah our feathers are going to go over here and other things like if we're down below when we drop something on the ground that gets picked up that'll end up in this chest it won't just get deleted or whatever so i think that is a nice safety measure uh, now one thing though the server just reset and when I logged back in, this chest had probably 20 different items that should have gone into the storage drawers, but they're in the chest. I guess like the conduit loaded and the chest loaded before the storage drawers loaded. And that was the only valid place for that stuff to go. I don't know. I might end up having to put another uh, conduit here going from underneath this chest, trying to go back into the storage drawer just to kind of fix things like that. I don't know how often that's going to happen. Or if it's going to be a major problem, but it is just something to note. So we do have this cable running right off the controller, right through the wall here, all the way over to a storage bus that is now on the drawer controller. That's where this guy is. Uh, another thing to note, <laughs> when I was trying to hook all this stuff back up over here, it had everything set up, but everything was going into this chest. I was like, why is it going into this chest? Hey, diamond armor. That's unusual. Yeah, apparently... Uh, things are going into this chest because you have to have a drawer controller, not a drawer sleeve for the whole multi-block structure thing to work. As soon as I put the controller back up here, things work correctly. Anyway, uh, so we can put that guy right here. That'll link up to our network and we should be able to now see everything that's in the drawers here on our applied energistic system, which is going to be great. And once that's done, we need to do it over to where our ores are over there as well. So yeah, we can come over here, we can see all these rare loot bags now, we can see things are coming in, spider eyes, all of our string. Yeah, this is really good. So all of the stuff that we're collecting from the mob loot down below is now available at our fingertips. We don't have to go back there and try and hunt down the drawer or anything like that. It's very cool. So yeah, the string's definitely gonna be useful. We're gonna need this to turn into wool and we're gonna need the wool to turn into the dense ME cable. Yeah, these guys here. If we want to run more channels around, we're going to need these as these glass cables will only handle eight. The dense ones handle 32. So it's definitely something we're going to have to look at. Okay. So yeah, next step is, like I said, we need to get something over here attached to these drawers. So probably what we'll do, um, maybe on the back, we can run the cable up to the back of our drawer controller here and just attach it right to that. Hmm, I might end up rearranging this thing again, trying to make it easier just to run the cable as a straight shot. A lot of these things we put in here without applied energistics in mind. And now that we have applied energistics, it's kind of like, ah, is that the way we want to do it? <laughs> so yeah, right here, our controller sleeve, this is uh, grabbing the stuff from up above and putting into this controller sleeve and putting into the drawer network to put into the compacting drawers and stuff. If we have ME cable running over here and attaching to our drawer controller, we can replace this slave right here with an interface and put the advanced item collector directly on the interface. That way it goes into the ME network 
And the enemy networks would be like, oh, we got a space for all that stuff. It's right up here. So we don't even need to use the drawers like we're doing. So yeah, we might end up changing a few of these things around. So I'll have to make a new interface. I'll have to make another uh, storage bus. And then we'll probably end up moving this monstrosity somehow. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but anyway, let me get to that and then we'll be back, guys. All right, so I went ahead and I added in our ME cable over here. We have a ME interface with our uh, advanced item collector on there set to collect all the things that are, we're going to be sifting up above. Uh, yeah, this kind of runs into a problem where we can't put the Ender IO conduits directly onto this mechanical user. But I think what we're going to end up doing is use like an export bus from an ME system and then we can just change out what it is that we're sifting at any time so we can set it for sand or gravel or dust or whatever. But we're going to have to get those resources together so we can do that. Uh, so I did upgrade our cobblestone generator to a tier 5. I did that I think last episode or something. Anyway, I did a little bit ago. This thing generates cobblestone really fast, guys. Like if you look in here, you can see how fast it's generating that cobblestone. That's pretty impressive compared to where we started. Uh, on the back of this one, we're extracting out and going up into another one so we can store it into the higher quantity. So we have uh, 400 and almost 430 quadruple compressed cobblestone right here. But yeah, we're just doing this so we can store mass quantities of cobblestone, always have it available. Okay, so we have that going like that. I put gravel in here so we can have a drawer for gravel in the same location. And then I was going to do sand, so I went to go put a piece of sand in this drawer and it says sand turns into sandstone that's not what we want so i just went and i made myself a piece of compressed sand which i should be able to click right here and then i'll change it to, from sand to compressed sand to double compressed sand that's what we want in here so we can store, lar store large quantities of sand but it is kind of cool though with these compacting drawers if you do have sandstone for some reason you can convert it to sand directly so that's a pretty awesome thing uh, we do want to lock these drawers though. We don't want to take out the last item and then to fill up with something from our mob farm down below or who knows whatever. So we want to make sure that those are all filled in. Uh, that is connected to our drawers up here through this one oak trim. We have that down here so we have an easy at a glance view of what we have going on. This is our sifting room so it kind of makes sense that we have our sifting stuff here. And I think we will end up having some kind of processing so we can turn that cobblestone into gravel, the gravel into sand and sand into dust and have that storage in this location. I think that's what this room is going to be used for eventually. So if we come back over to Applied Energistic System now, we should be able to see all of our different ores that we've collected, all these different pieces. It kind of sucks seeing all these things in here. We should go through and process everything turn those into the ores into the, I'm sorry, turn the ore chunks into the ingots and the ingots into the blocks and have storage that way. We'll probably end up doing that. We'll also want to have some kind of an ore processing plant in here as well as the gravel and sand and dust. So all these things that we work on in the future, but yeah, getting everything connected like this is really, really good. Uh, other things we could do, uh, we could take this cable that we have over here and we could start putting uh, what are those called? The, the crafting tables or whatever. Yeah. So we could see what's in, in our ME system at any time. Uh, there's other things that we can do as well, like the wireless stuff. So we have access to our, our, uh, items anywhere we are. Uh, does this have the wireless crafting table? Yeah, I don't see a wireless crafting table. There's a wireless terminal from Applied Energistics, but this is just a terminal. It's not a crafting terminal. Oh, actually, it's right here. Did I miss that before? If I did... I missed that. We do have the wireless crafting terminal in here. This is what we're looking for. Aha! So this, we should be able to access all of our stuff at any time just by right-clicking on it. Now, this system is costing power. We've already seen that the controller itself costs a lot. It's probably way bigger than what we need. In fact, we could probably shave off a whole lot of this and save a bunch of power, but we're not going to do that. We should make ourselves a, a networking tool or network tool, whatever it's called. Yeah, network tool. We should make one of these things just to kind of get an idea of how much power our system is using right now. 
network diagnostic. Oh yeah, so you just right click anywhere on the system and it'll tell you how much power is stored, what you're using, things like that. So currently we're using 850 RF, almost 860 RF per tick for everything that we have connected. Our controllers, I believe, is the biggest power drain here, 408. Uh, let's see, is any of these else? I'm not sure where all of the power is going. For using 858 RF per tick, and the ME controllers are using 408, where's the rest of that power coming from? This uses 2 RF per tick. The drive uses 11. And the storage buses use 4. I don't know where the rest of that power, where is that coming from? That seems a little odd. I wonder if there's some kind of like power. I, I want to say like a debuff where it's like using twice the amount of power is what it should be using. Mm, not really sure. Anyway, we're able to get, <laughs> we're able to get done what we need to get done. So that's great. Anyway, uh, the networking tool will come in handy in case we have some kind of power issues later. We can, you know, use that to see what's going on with the system. Uh, so let's see, what else do we need to get hooked up? We have our mob stuff hooked up. We have our ores and stuff hooked up. Anything over here needs a little bit? No, not really. We do have machines though, that we can look at starting to automate and all of that kind of stuff. Maybe the next thing we should do is look at auto crafting and get that stuff going. There's a lot of different things that we can make and apply to energistics. Automatically, it'll make our life easier like more applied energistics components for one, uh, things so far like pistons. I've had to repeatedly make a lot of that stuff. Our processors, all of those. Yeah, that's going to require some infrastructure. And of course, like the dense cables so we can run, or I guess we can replace these things with the dense ones and run more channels around. Okay. Well, that's the next thing we're going to work on. So, uh, first thing that we're going to need to do is make a molecular assembler. I can spell it correctly. We need the molecular assembler. This does the uh, applied energistics crafting. You place an interface next to this that has a pattern on it, and the interface pushes the items into the assembler. The assembler does the craft and pushes it back into the interface, and that's how the auto crafting is done. So we need at least one of these, and then we're going to need at least one interface. And I can tell we're going to need more of these cores since those are used for the interfaces as well. Hmm. Let's just go ahead and make, okay, what are we missing? Oh, the crafting tables. Yeah, let's do like four. We'll start off kind of small here. We'll do four molecular assemblers and we'll do four interfaces. This will just get our basic uh, auto crafting going here. Of course, we're gonna need more of these guys. That's why I made a lot of these logic processors earlier because we are going to need a lot of that stuff for all the different applied energistics things that we're going to be doing here. So we're out of Fluex. Well, the Fluex dust. Uh, we can run that over here through our sag mill. Yeah, another thing we're going to have to do is figure out where the permanent location of these machines are going to be. We could start trying to automate some of these things, but it kind of sucks automating something and then having to tear it down and reset it up somewhere else. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's what this platform over here is going to be is like our automated machines. That could be a thing. I'll have to look into that one. Okay. Well, anyway, let me go ahead and get the rest of these parts made up here. Hopefully we can sleep through. Well, <laughs> when it becomes nighttime, we'll sleep and get a, get rid of the rain and make our life a little bit easier here. But anyway, give me a few moments here and we'll be back. All right, guys, so we got our basic auto crafting set up over here. We have four molecular assemblers, four ME interfaces, and we just have an ME glass cable that runs underneath the ground over here, over this cable and up to our controller. This will be changed later on, but for right now, it just makes it so the cable's not in the way. We're not running it out all over the place. <laughs> yeah, so we're able to do some basic auto crafting here. Now we're gonna have to put patterns in here so the interface can know to craft something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's something we have to figure out. You know what? I'm just noticing right now that this doesn't appear to be lit up. Now, normally when these have power, the uh, assemblers are glowing a little bit. Let's take a look in here. Did I miss a cable? Oh, I absolutely did miss a cable. I thought I had that hooked up. Apparently I derped. Okay. So let's go do a ME glass cable. Yeah, I thought I had that hooked up. I guess not. Oh, we can just do it right there. Perfect. Okay. So now everything's hooked up. Aha. 
All right, so yes, <laughs> those are ready to go. I did make an ME pattern terminal and I made an ME interface terminal. So the pattern terminal will allow us to put in blank patterns here, set the pattern that we want, encode it. Then we got the item. The interface terminal over here will allow us to see all the different spots that we can put those patterns into. So the molecular assemblers, all of those are these right here. They are talking, these are the interfaces talking to the molecular assembler. You can see in here uh, on the other terminal, there's one that says nothing. That is because we have an interface in here that's not talking to anything. It's not attached to a machine. It only has an advanced item collector on it. On this interface, we have a button here that says show or hide on interface terminal. If we click that button, we'll no longer see that nothing in our interface terminal over here. It drives me crazy when I get large ME systems hooked up and then I have like five or six nothings. And then I gotta go around and be like, okay, so which interface is not talking to anything? Where, where is this even coming from? So <laughs> if you keep on top of it right at the start, then you don't have to worry about those. But anyway, we have the four molecular assemblers shown on our network, those over there, and we are ready to go. So our first task is to craft a blank pattern. Just one of these guys. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and craft one here. So we crafted a blank pattern. So the next task is to make a pattern for making more blank patterns. Cause obviously every recipe that we auto craft, we're going to need one of these four, right? Uh, so Certus quartz crystal. Now we have a button here that says, or dictionary substitution. So we can either prevent the, uh, or dictionary substitution. This recipe accepts both pure and the regular Certus quartz crystal. Uh, so if we only want to use pure and we have auto crafting set up to make more pure, we want to do that. But for right now, we're going to press this button and we'll do allow substitutions. So it'll use the pure Certus as long as we have it. But when we run out, it'll default over to this one. I think that's what we want to do. So there's our first recipe. So we can stick that in any one of these doesn't really matter. Now we can say blank pattern and tell the system, Hey, I want to craft I don't know, 20 of those things. It'll tell me what I have and what I'm missing. So it looks like we are missing quartz glass and we are missing pure service quartz crystal. I'm not really sure why it says that we're missing those. Maybe it can only craft until we have, uh, or we can only craft the 13 that we have. And then after that, it needs to do another recipe for the regular Certus. Not entirely sure. Well, let's tell the system. If we want to make the blink pattern and we want to make 13 of those, is that going to be okay? Looks like we, uh, it looks like everything's okay except for the quartz glass. So let's make some more quartz glass here. That's a pretty, actually let's make a recipe for the system to make the quartz glass. So we're getting serious quartz dust just from sifting. We're also getting nether quartz dust from sifting. I think we'll just use this recipe here. Again, we'll leave the allow or, or yeah, substitutions on. Oh, actually we need to craft one more of these things before we can do that. All right, let's go back to this thing, back to this one and that one. Okay, so we'll do this. So now we have a pattern for the quartz glass. So that's now a thing that we can do. I believe we'll only be able to craft 12 blank patterns now. So if we tell it to craft 12 of those, is it happy? Mm hmm. So it needs eight glass and the Certus quartz dust in order to make this quartz glass. And then everything else looks like we have in the system, but it says we have no crafting CPUs. Aha. So this is another part of applied energy six auto crafting. It's not just put the patterns in there. You have to take the items out of the system, put into like a separate crafting CPU. And that's what talks to your interfaces and all this stuff. When these are done, it puts it back into that, which puts it back in your system. I think that's how that works. So we need a crafting storage. Okay. So crafting storage requires a crafting unit. So it's a few more processors, some glass, Nothing too crazy. We probably should make a recipe for that, but we're just going to make one for now. And then we need at least a 1K, at least a 1K ME storage component. And we're out of the logic. Uh oh. Okay. So more <laughs> gold, more silicon, and a little bit more redstone to put them all together again. I don't know how many of these we're going to make. Let's just, I don't know. How about eight? Eight seems like a pretty reasonable number here. So we can put the logic in here with the gold. Oh no, that's silicon. 
put the logic in there, put the silicon in there, put them all together, make our processors and get this thing going here. So there's those and this one. Yeah, eventually we will have this hooked up. So this is automated. We'll just tell the system, hey, make me some logic processors. All the items that we need goes into our advanced inscribers and it just crafts it. It's gonna be so much better. But until then, we'll just do it this way. So I think we needed, what, like one or two of these things? I think that's all we needed. Yeah, just one. All right, so let's just craft that. So there is one <laughs> of our components. So crafting units plus the ME storage component go in here. And there is a 1K crafting storage. So next gen crafting achievement get. So these things you can later upgrade if you don't know. Similar to discs, you can take them apart. So this disc right here has nothing on it. If it's in your inventory, you can shift or right click and take them apart and you can put them back together. So you can reuse the housing and then upgrade that component into like a 4K if you want to later on. So same thing with the crafting storages. That is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> shift right click. Oh no, I guess you can't shift right click. You just put it into your crafting grid and that takes it apart, right? Okay, so there you go. So you can do that. This has to go somewhere on your network. Normally, later on, we'll have a spot specific for these, but for right now, it can go just anywhere on the network so we can get this craft going here. Okay, so once again, we'll go back to the blink patterns. <laughs> Let's just tell the system to make like 10 of these. Can we do that? All right, we can do, uh, we should be able to do eight. Blink patterns, can we make eight of those? There we go. Let's start the craft. Oh boy, there it is. Okay, auto crafting done. Yeah, there's a little bit of infrastructure that you gotta do right at the start to get going with applied energistics auto crafting. But once you get this stuff done, like you're only gonna upgrade these a few more times. And then once you're there, like you don't have to worry about it again. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we were able to get that done. We have blink patterns to make more patterns <laughs> to make more stuff is gonna be so good. So I gotta figure out why, when I tell the system to make blank patterns, it doesn't work because it's requiring the pure certus. I thought those were interchangeable. We do have this one set to use substitutions, but doesn't want to use that substitution. I don't know why. I'll have to figure that out. I guess what I should do at this point, I should make a, up a bunch of sand. Uh, make the seeds, put them in here. Just make a bunch of the pure certus, just so we don't have to worry about that for a little bit of time until we get to the point where we have that auto crafting. And then that's just going to make our life easier. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made a bunch of the patterns for some of the most common applied energistics things like acceleration cards and the advanced card that turns into the acceleration cards. We want more molecular assemblers, interfaces, the different cores, all of those kinds of things. So that'll make our life easier. So one of the things we're gonna be running into problems is making sand, making gravel, making dust, right? So we're gonna to have to set up some kind of a thing that's gonna automatically do that. I think we were mentioning that earlier. Uh, so yeah, that will be a thing we'll probably work on very, very soon. I'm thinking next episode, uh, but yeah, we're kind of running low on time for <laughs> today. I was just kind of noticing, oh no. Uh, so let's go to our quest section. We have some quests here that I've completed by upgrading your cobblestone generator, we have the tier four we can claim. Let's do the top loot chest. We'll do those today, claim those. Uh, so yeah, we made those guys. I know there's a few more quests in here that I had completed. Yeah, I made octatic capacitors. All of our Ender IO machines now have octatic capacitors in them. So yep, uh, got those. We made the vibrant alloy that goes into those capacitors as well, the energetic alloy is used for our energy cables that we're using around here. We made the uh, experience obelisk, right? So lots of different things that we've knocked out. The solarium that we've made, uh, and then a slice and splice. I think we made that a while ago. That got unlocked when I made this stuff. I guess the quest was available to be claimed. And then finally, our capacitor bank. And we got so many of these, more than I thought we did. Is there anything else in here that I'm missing that we might have unlocked? No, looks like that's where we are right now. My goodness, look at all of those. That's a lot. Let's see what we get out of these chests. All right, we get some basic capacitors. That's decent. Some viaducts. All right, those are ways to get around. I've never actually used them before, but they're they're more of like a toy than something. I don't see myself ever really using them. 
All right, so we got two of the four, or I guess eight, uh, two of the rewards of eight, four carry it plus. Man, that was really hard. It's a lot of numbers. Uh, all right, so we got a ring O experience. We got epic bacon. It's pretty epic. Uh, cave spider charm. We got stone and wood. Uh, lithium dust. That's a rare. Is that something? It says it's a rare reward. I wonder if that's good or not. I don't know. And our last one is draconic cores. I think we've gotten that reward like three times now. It's a pretty good reward. Very happy about that. Cause those are a little expensive. If you guys didn't see the recipe before, oh my goodness. So yes, we got lots of stuff hooked up. All of our different storages are all now connected together. We have a little bit of basic auto crafting. Uh, what else do we have here? We cleaned up this <laughs> monstrosity we had going over here. All of our drops from our our mob farm down below are being properly collected and sorted. Anything new in here? Nope. We're up to 60 feathers, though. That is kind of cool, though, that we got the diamond armor from the mob farm. I wasn't really expecting that. What, are, what pieces did we get? Oh, we got the boots and the chest piece, both of which we're probably never going to use, unfortunately. Oh, well. But, guys, I, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. Uh, oh, you know what? One more thing. One more thing. I didn't make this item magnet. I think I made that last episode off camera. We needed some kind of magnet for working in the void. And I made this one from Passwords Things. It's rather inexpensive, but it does cost RF for item collection. That's the only thing about it I don't really like. There is one more magnet that we can make <laughs> that doesn't. And that's the coin of suck. This thing right here. We weren't able to make this thing previously because we didn't have slime pearls, which we do now. And we didn't have bat wings, which we do now. We have everything else for this thing. And in my opinion, it's a better magnet simply for the fact that it doesn't require power. So even though this magnet is good and it does what I like, yep, coin of fortune, better. Uh, both of those, it looks like you can put on, yeah, bobble slide, I guess on your head. I'm, I don't know if this thing has an on off feature. There's probably some key binds. You can turn this thing on and off. So it saves an inventory slot, but yep, that's pretty awesome. Anyway, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.